Hi, I'm Mindy with Henley I Handmade. I naturally dye U.S. farm wool for knitters and crocheters who are working to minimize their creative footprint. Today I'm giving you a peek into my dye garden. Each year I try to grow as many dye plants as I can so that I can do all the dyeing in my own home kitchen. We have lived on this property for about three years now, three and a half years. This is my third summer growing in this garden here in central Oregon, where we have a very short growing season. It's the high desert, so we get really cold nights um, and really warm, warm days uh, during the peak of summer. So any plants that I plant before June 1st, well, and even sometimes after June 1st, I have to cover at night. Um, because there's such a, a high risk of frost, we get really cold at night here, even even now. So it's midsummer now. I think it's July 26th, and I don't have to worry about frost right now, but I did even late June. So um, we do really have a true short growing season. Our first frost will happen in September, hopefully late September, but we'll see how the summer goes. Um, Let's take a peek into my dye garden and I will tell you a little more about it. Uh, after, afterwards, I'm going to show you around the rest of my garden in case you're interested. Alright, well, I'll see you in the dye garden. When I was planning this update for you, I envisioned showing you a flower bed packed full of beautiful, gorgeous flowers blooming, almost ready for harvest. <laughs> Instead, I have this. Um, <laughs> I wanted to show you this anyway because um, this is this is this is true life that for me. Um, let me let me give you a little closer look here. So, in the center of this bed, I had planned to have my Dyer's Coreopsis. And it has just been chewed to basically the dirt. Now, funny story here. I've been blaming the grasshoppers because every time I come out and water this particular bed, it's covered in grasshoppers. Now, I'm sure they have taken some samples. <laughs> However, when I came out this morning to film this, there was a little bunny sitting right in the middle chomping away. Now this is probably the same bunny or a friend of the same bunny that I keep finding in my wild garden or my wild flower bed. So, so that bunny is probably the same one that I have found in my wild flower bed, which I will show you in a little bit. As you can see, my prop, my dye garden, well, my whole garden is surrounded by a large fence. Um, I think it's a 12 foot fence to keep deer out and all of the jackrabbits. Unfortunately, the little cottontails can still get through. So I am going to probably today <laughs> get some chicken wire and line the bottom part with chicken wire to keep the bunnies out. I had no idea until this morning that that was what the problem was. I really thought it was those grasshoppers. So um, yeah, that's really, I mean, it's good information to know because now I can fix it. So anyway, I'm, those plants are probably not going to come back. Um, they are so itty bitty tiny. So after they, they have been nibbling, I'm saying they, I'm just going to call it they because it could be the grasshoppers, it could be the bunnies, it could be both. Um, after the coreopsis was eaten, then they moved on to my bachelor's buttons. And every time I get a, a bud on my, my bachelor's buttons, they get chewed off. So um, I don't think I'm going to be able to. These ones actually look pretty good. So maybe if I can get that fence up and keep the bunnies out, maybe I can still get a couple flowers just, just for fun. We'll see about that. So anyway, that is bachelor's buttons, and all of these are supposed to be bachelor's buttons as well. Um, this was supposed to be such a big, beautiful bed. <sighs> oh well. Um, so 
what they haven't touched is the calendula and I'm very happy to see that I have buds that are look at that one that one's just about ready to open um, and I have a couple sections here of those hopefully <laughs> I'll still have lots of time to harvest those around the whole outside of the bed was supposed to be marigolds now I'm not sure exactly what happened I don't even have buds on these yet um, I do still have maybe a dozen 18 maybe 18 marigolds left um, these little guys here um, I'm not sure why they didn't grow because I was hoping to have a whole whole lot of them um, yeah I'll just have to try new things next year so um, now I want to show you the rest of my garden I do have other marigolds scattered throughout if you're interested in seeing those um, but I'm gonna move I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the rest the rest of my garden um, one more word about this um, so I learn things every year and I think the lesson I learned here uh, besides getting some chicken wire up to protect keep those bunnies out um, I think I'm gonna make sure that I scatter more of my dye plants around my garden. I thought I was doing okay by putting marigolds with basically in all my other beds, but some of them are doing better than others. And I think next year, I'm just gonna make sure that I scatter them everywhere just um, for extra insurance. All right, let's move around to the rest of my garden. I really kind of screwed up here and I waited until the sun was too high to really do a good job of showing everything. But um, this, these are just two of my little zucchini plants that are not exactly thriving in the production arena. I have, there I've got a little marigold there. Um, and I have some flowers here. All of these marigolds, well, that one I planted by seed. Um, all of these marigolds here that look kind of iffy, I bought at a big box store when I was just kind of desperate to get some color into my garden, and they're not doing very well for some reason. I'm not sure what happened to them, but uh, then I have some nasturtium planted here, which also isn't blooming. I really need to figure out a way to get my seeds more of my seeds started earlier especially those flowers um, for some reason I didn't expect them to take so long to germinate um, I think I, I have a plan uh, before I, I have a neighbor who has a small greenhouse and she's offered to let me put some plants in it next year so we'll see I, I might do that I'm also looking into setting up uh, a table in what will eventually be my dye studio and get some grow lights just so that I can get more plants, more seeds started next year. These are a couple of my um, bludgling Roma tomatoes that I did plant a little bit on the late side. I grew them from seed, but their biggest problem was that they did not get covered when we had frost. I lost one of them. There were supposed to be three here. I lost one of them. So I'm just honestly surprised. And these are kind of bonus, bonus plants. That one doesn't have any blossoms. Oh, there has, there's one blossom on it. This one has a bunch of blossoms on it. So if I get some fruit on it this year, I'll be excited. I did, I ran out of covers. So these guys <laughs> were the ones that got sacrificed. So. I'm pleased that they have anything on them, that they're not completely dead. That is um, my cucumbers. I was supposed to have four cucumber plants here. Only two of them have survived, and you can see that one of them over there really is quite small still. Um, these particular cucumbers have done really well for me in the past. I am kind of surprised by how slow they're growing this year. And maybe it's just because I started my garden earlier that um, the confusion 
Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I haven't kept great records of my planting in the previous two years. Um, yeah, I right after we moved in, I went on bed rest with my youngest. I was pregnant with my youngest and, and had to go on bed rest. He tried to come really early. And so I didn't, and then he was a newborn for the summer, so I didn't really plant much that summer. And then of course he was still quite young the next summer. So this is really the first year that, oh wait, that would mean that this is the fourth summer. Oh, this is my fourth summer in this garden. So, but this is really the third time that I've actually really planted, planted anything. So, um, okay. So every year I have lessons. This, <laughs> I planted nine tomato plants in this five by five square pit. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, of course they're overcrowded. Um, I have marigolds that are in there that were looking really, really good and happy. And I've actually harvested a lot of blossoms off of them, but they're not so happy now. There's also a basil plant in there. Uh, but you know, you live and learn next year. I won't plant nearly as many. I'm, I, gosh, I'm almost tempted to just take some of them out now, but I just don't want to mess up the root systems of the ones that I would keep in there. So I'm just leaving it. <laughs> Um, that's a bed that my husband made for me. It's kind of a bonus bed that we ran out of dirt, so I couldn't fill it up. Um, but as, as it happened, I just didn't get all of my beds filled completely anyway. Although, <laughs> it could be an additional tomato plant bed next year. Help me spread them out. My main goal with my vegetables this year was to make, it was to produce enough tomatoes to can. So that was why I... I have a lot of tomato plants. Okay, these I planted brand new this year from Keynes. They're raspberries. They're doing really, really well. Better than I expected. I guess I've never intentionally grown um, any kind of raspberry, blackberry. I can't think of the broader term for them. But they're hardy. <laughs> They'll withstand the cold here. I'm super excited that they've grown so well. I even have some fruit on them this year. And yes, I still need to put my trellis up and I also really need to get a net over it because I, I noticed I already lost um, an almost ripe raspberry. So, okay, let me show you my sunflowers. Oh, these are actually, some of these are actually intended to be dye plants as well. This is the first year I've ever grown sunflowers specifically for dyeing um, and I planted them really early I if you've watched any of my previous um, garden episodes I was following the lead of my neighbor and I thought that he had planted his sunflowers really early and I went ahead and I planted and um, they survived all of them amazingly survived all of the frost. I covered them each night with a little <laughs> empty food can and But as you can see some of them are doing a lot better than others. The other thing that I'm going to do next year is um, definitely going to um, Build up the soil not not plant them so close to the fence and um, just give them more more food to eat. I didn't realize that they were such heavy feeders, but I've since learned that they are, so I need to actually give them some fertilizer. Uh, let's see. These are my peas, which were doing really, really well until yesterday. Um, I've been harvesting from them off. I've been harvesting them all every day for the last couple of weeks. But as you can see, something came in and just chewed them off. So I've talked about bunnies. <laughs> Let me talk about my, my friendly or not so friendly local gopher. I think that might have been him. I don't know. I thought I had chased him off. He might still be around. Uh, we do also get lots of mice. We have pack rats here too. So um, this doesn't really look like pack rats to me from what I've heard. Um, I think pack rats usually 
chew stuff off and leave them in a pile and then come back and get them. Which, they, these just got chewed off and so I don't, I'm not exactly sure what happened here. It could have been the bunny too maybe. I'm not sure. The bunny seems to just be going for the flowers though, so. But then again, I thought the bunny was just <laughs> in my wildflowers and it wasn't, so maybe, maybe not. Okay, uh, yes, more tomatoes. <laughs> These six, well, we'll really call it five because this thing is basically dead. Um, these five plants here are cherry tomatoes. They're my absolute favorite tomatoes. And I tried this year. These are indeterminate. Um, it's an indeterminate variety. So see that I put <laughs> these really long, long stakes up. I was following the instructions of somebody, a, a YouTuber, a garden YouTuber, and he said, prune those, prune them, prune them, prune them, which I've never pruned them before, and I think I over pruned them because they do have tons of blossoms on them now, and there's even a few, the starts of a few fruit, but really, I think I, I over pruned, and that, oh, I don't know, we'll see. I think I'm still gonna get some fruit off of them, so that, that's good. Um, and here's a couple more. The big bushy guys there are my two more Romas. And you'll see, I do have, I've been forgetting to point them out, but I do have marigolds scattered throughout. Um, these guys look way happier than the ones in my overcrammed bed, so I think I'm gonna just need to take those out of the other bed. Okay, now let me show you I have a bed full of peppers and eggplant and more flowers. I have more flowers, of course. And then I have this fantastic zucchini plant, which is the one that's really producing for me. And I'm not sure what the difference is between this one and these other two over here that are not producing as well. They were planted in the same soil, and yeah, I don't know. These beds are deeper. I don't know. I'm not sure what the difference is, really. Early, early, maybe in March, I planted carrots in this bed, just in this corner over here. And I eventually stopped watering them because I couldn't keep them moist. It was getting too sunny during the day. So I gave up and then lo and behold, a little hardy guy showed up. So I've been watering him. I'm pretty sure that's a carrot. It sure looks like a carrot. Uh, maybe I'm just watering a weed, but, I'm <laughs> but we'll see how that, what ends up with that. This is a section of what used to be my wildflower garden that just absolutely flopped. This is the other side of the wildflower garden that is looking pretty sad now. So this is where I've been finding that little bunny basically every morning. And every morning, more and more of my flowers have disappeared. So I'm still watering it in hopes that I'll still get a few more flowers. I, I have gotten more. So um, next year I'll have that fencing up. So hopefully it'll grow better. And so anyway, with, with the failure of the seeds not germinating in this part and I did use different dirt when I was topping off these beds uh, I used different dirt here than I did over here and also I had two mixes of wildflower seeds so one mix went here and one mix went over here so there's a, too many variables for me to really been able to be able to pinpoint the problem but I'm now suspicious that maybe it's the dirt because I planted some beautiful healthy plants flowers the back dead thing was a phlox these two right in the middle were miniature carnations and then I have two little lavender plants um, a word about the design here it looks totally ridiculous I had planned on planting more little flowers in here and then when they <laughs> when they started to um, not do so well. I decided to just leave it. 
So that to me, I I don't know, maybe maybe it is the dirt. I did give them fertilizer when I when I planted them. So I don't man, I don't know. Even my lavender, which usually does really well here in Central Oregon, my lavender isn't doing so well either. So I may just dig those up and move them somewhere else where I think that they might thrive. But they get lots of sun, they've had lots of water. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, and wildflowers, I've learned through my local Facebook gardening group, it sounds like I'm not the only one who struggles to grow them. So <laughs> that makes me feel a little better. Um, basically, the advice that I've heard is just keep throwing out new seed each year and eventually, eventually you get a thriving wildflower garden. So um, we'll keep trying that. We'll keep trying that. Um, I think I showed you everything except for, except for my strawberries, which were one of the first things that I planted when I moved into this house. They did not produce this year. I think I got two, two berries and animals took off with them. So I also have not given them any sort of fertilizer. Shame on me. So I will definitely do that. And hopefully I, I actually am probably going to move them anyway. This probably isn't the best place to put them, but when I had first moved in here, I was like, ooh, I just want to plant something. So I planted something that I thought I'd be successful at. Um, that first year, I got a couple strawberries and the ants got the rest of them. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, it's just one pest after another. Um, there are some herbs that I never got around to planting. I still water them and they're still doing okay. And these are two mini pumpkins that I planted super duper late. So I'm happy that they're even alive and they have blossoms on them too. So I'm excited. I think that will be really fun to have little mini pumpkins if they will, um, if I can get them to, um, you know, finish their, finish growing before we get a lot of frost. So that's my garden. And, um, yeah, if, if you are interested in me doing a little walk around my property sometime, um, we're on about five and a half acres, which, um, is enough for us. I mean, we would like for it to be a little more sometimes, but, um, but if you're interested in me doing like a little walk around with you, just to show you, that might be fun. Um, then let me know and I will arrange that. Uh, I could even do that as a live. That might be fun. And then I could answer questions live if you have any, any questions. Um, oh, you know what? I wanted to point out one more thing. Um, this is a biggie too, because this garden has come so far this year compared to where it was at the beginning of the year. Um, a lot of these beds are new. Almost all of them are new, in fact. And the biggest problem that I was concerned about when we were making these beds was how to water everything because watering everything by hand that would take me a really long time to do so my amazing husband installed pvc piping all the way around the outside of my garden here it goes all the way around um there's the water spigot and um that has a that has allowed me to hook up hoses throughout He's added spigots basically every other post, which is fantastic because now I have plenty of spigots to run hoses to everything. Some, some are on soaker hoses that, that I even have on timers. Um, in a future, at a future date, I would like to have everything self-watering. Um, uh, as much as possible but soaker hoses were hard I, when, when we were trying to find more soaker hoses this year they were really hard to find well we couldn't find any new ones actually so the ones that I have are all ones that I already had from previous years um, and I do have some drip uh, a drip kit to set up as well 
um, but that still doesn't cover every, it wouldn't cover all of my beds. So eventually, eventually that will happen. Um, and those raspberries, <laughs> the raspberries I already know are not in the best spot, but I needed a place to plant them. So my husband built me a box real quick and <laughs> we planted them there. So, um, I think that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to leave them in the comments or you can always shoot me an email. Um, and if you have any ideas on how to deal with pests in the garden, maybe a gopher, those bunnies, um, those are the biggies. <laughs> Let me know. I, I appreciate any advice any advice that you can offer me so thanks for being here and um i'll try to do another update sometime maybe when my dye garden if i if my dye garden really starts to take off i'll do another update to show you that when it's all blooming all right have a great day thanks for being here to with me today bye